Yeah, I think is there's definitely an interesting tool of storytelling. It has struggled with mathematics, which is interesting, or just even numbers. Hmm. It's able to, it's not able to generate like patterns, you know, like you give it um, in, in like five digit numbers and it's not able to figure out the sequence, you know, or like um, I didn't look in too much, but I'm talking about like sequences like the Fibonacci hmm. numbers and to see how far it can go because obviously it's leveraging stuff from the internet and it starts to lose it. But it is also cool that I've seen it able to generate some interesting patterns um, that are mathematically correct. Yeah, I, I honestly haven't dug into like what's going on within it uh, in a way that I can speak intelligently to. I guess it doesn't surprise me that it's bad at numerical patterns because, I mean, maybe I should be more impressed with it, but like that requires having... Um, a weird combination of intuitive and uh, and formulaic worldview. So you're not just going off of intuition when you see Fibonacci numbers. You're not saying like, intuitively, what do I think will follow the 13? Like, ah, I've seen patterns a lot where like 13s are followed by 21s. Instead, it's that like the way you're starting to see a shape of things is by knowing what hypotheses to test, where you're saying, oh, maybe it's generated based on the previous terms, or maybe it's generated based on like multiplying by a constant or whatever it is. You like have a bunch of different hypotheses and your intuitions are around those hypotheses, but you still need to actively test it. Um, and it seems like GPT-3 is extremely good at um, like that sort of pattern matching recognition that usually is very hard for computers, that um, is what humans get good at through expertise and exposure to lots of things. It's why it's good to learn from as many examples as you can rather than just from the definitions. It's to get that level of intuition. But to actually concretize it into a piece of math, you do need to um, like test your hypotheses and if not prove it, um, like have an actual explanation for what's going on, not just a uh, a pattern that you've seen. Yeah, and but then the flip side, to play devil's advocate, that's a very kind of probably correct, intuitive understanding of just like we said, a few, a few layers creating abstractions. But it's been able to form something that looks like uh, a, a compression of the data that it's seen that looks awfully a lot like it understands what the heck it's talking about. Well, I think a lot of understanding is, like, I don't mean to uh, denigrate pattern recognition. Pattern recognition is most of understanding, and it's super important, and it's super hard. Um, and so, like, when it's demonstrating this kind of real understanding, compressing down s some data, like, that that might be pattern recognition at its finest. My only point would be that like what differentiates math, I think, to a large extent, is that um, the pattern recognition isn't sufficient and that the kind of patterns that you're recognizing are not like the end goals, but instead they're, they are the little bits and paths that get you to the end goal. So that's certainly true for mathematics in general. It's an interesting question if that might, uh, for certain kinds of series of numbers, it might not be true. Like you might, um, because that's a basic, you know, like Taylor's, like certain kinds of series, it feels like compressing the internet uh, is is enough to figure out, because those p patterns in some form appear in the text somewhere. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, uh, there's all sorts of wonderful examples of false patterns in math, where um, one of the earliest videos I put on the channel was talking about you're kind of dividing a circle up using these chords and you see this pattern of one, two, four, eight, sixteen. 16. I was like, okay, pretty easy to see what that pattern is. It's powers of two. You've seen it a million times. Um, but it's not powers of two. The next term is 31. And so it's like almost a power of two, but it's a little bit shy. And there's, there's actually a very good explanation for what's going on. Um, but I think it's a good test of whether you're thinking clearly about mechanistic explanations of things, how quickly you jump to thinking it must be powers of two. Because the problem itself, there's really no no good way to, I mean, there can't be a good way to think about it as like doubling a set because ultimately it doesn't. But even before it starts to, it's not something that screams out as being a doubling phenomenon. So at best, if it did turn out to be powers of two, it would have only been so very subtly. And I think the difference between like, you know, a math student making the mistake and a mathematician who's experienced seeing that kind of pattern is that they, they'll have a sense from what the problem itself is, whether the pattern that they're observing is reasonable and how to test it. And like, uh, I, I, would, I would just be very impressed if there was any algorithm that um, was actively accomplishing that goal. Yeah, like a learning-based algorithm. Yeah, like a little scientist, I guess, yeah, basically. Little, yeah.
I, it's, it's a it's a fascinating thought because GPT three these language models are already accomplishing way more than I've expected. So I'm learning not to doubt. Oh, I'll be, I bet we'll get there. Yeah, yeah I, I'd be. I'm not saying I'd be impressed, but like surprised. Like I'll be impressed, but I I think we'll get there on um, algorithms doing math like that.